um, law enforcement. So in any mobile network, from the operator side, you can establish a radio connection to the phone, but you cannot actually transfer an SMS or, or start a phone call or something. And in this case, there is a, a permanent radio connection between your phone and the network, and the phone will continuously transmit packets, and the network will transmit packets back. Um, typically, in law enforcement applications, there is no data uh, transferred over that channel. You just establish the channel so the phone permanently transmits and you can pinpoint where the phone is. That's the typical application of that. Your phone will not show you that it is doing anything. It will just be as quiet as it is in other, you know, there's no, no indication to the user whatsoever. Um, and since GSM is a, um, is a master-slave protocol, the phone will not close that connection ever. In the GSM network, the network tells the phone what to do. If the network says, open a channel, then the phone will open the channel, and the phone will not close that channel unless the network says, close the channel. So since we don't send that command, the channel stays open indefinitely, and we can send as much data as we want to the phone back and forth um, at whatever speed the radio um, channel has been configured to, to, to have. So now the tools are available. There are multiple solutions out, out there for sending arbitrary protocol data. Um, the same that you can do with OpenBSC and, uh, and a regular conventional BTS, you can also do with OpenBTS, which is another open source project in the GSM world. Um, uh, it's the same capability is there. You can establish this call, you, the silent call. Um, you can never, never close the radio channel and you can send random data to the phone or whatever specifically crafted data. Um, so the tools are there. Um, my question to everyone in the audience would be, um, would you rather want to be the 100,000th person to, you know, to do some fuzzing on a TCP IP protocol, or do you want to be the 10th the person to ever uh, fuzz mobile handsets? Tools are there. Use them. So where do we go from here? Um, the tools exist. Um, of course, now it's, it's a matter of maybe uh, creating some more sophisticated uh, uh, tools than just the Scapey plugin, maybe some templates, some, some uh, packets. Find actual bugs in the phones, document those bugs, um, you know, maybe create a database or a wiki about weird um, protocol level behaviors of mobile phones. Um, it's up to the security community to make use of those tools. Um, as I said, uh, I think TCP IP security in the 21st century is quite boring. Um, look at things that other people have not looked yet, not at the same thing all over again. Boldly go where no man has gone before. Um, what we're working on also at the moment is uh, GPR as an edge support um, in OpenBSC. Um, it, I think, uh, well, maybe late quarter one, uh, this uh, next year, 2010, uh, we will have something uh, there. Then uh, we can also exercise the, the packet network uh, part of the protocol stack on the phone. Um, and uh, we can send data to a phone without uh, the mobile network operator's network in between because the TCP IP networks that are used for GPRS, um, that's heavy filtering and, and whatnot. And once we have that support in OpenBSC, we can really know what we send to the phone without anyone interfering to that. Uh, 3G support is also being worked on. I don't know when that will uh, appear. And uh, we're working on uh, uh, actually the phone side layer one. So um, we can uh, do the same things we can do to the phones now. We can, of, of course, we also want to do them to the network because somehow we need, of course, to verify the stability and robustness of OpenBSC. We need, of course, some tool to verify that. Um, yeah, MMS is an interesting thing. It's application layer. We don't really do much uh, work in that area. Other people are doing that. Um, however, today they always have to send it through a regular operator network and they might do filtering. So you never really know what kind of bugs in the phone are protected by filters in the specific operator network. Um, and uh, once you claim to be an, an operator, you can, you can circumvent all of that. The radio resource location protocol also needs more exploration. We need more detailed statistics, how many phones support it, how reliably it works. Um, and we need to find out how we can disable it in, in popular phones. Um, because I think many people do not like the idea that anyone who claims a network can get their GPS position. 
Further reading, well, there is the OpenBSC uh, project, there is OpenBTS uh, as well, um, there is AirProbe, which is a protocol analysis tool. Um, as I said, the ABIS injection proxy is already in, and the silent call feature, the, those are part of the regular OpenBSC distribution. Um, the SCAPE uh, implementation I will release later today. We'll also put it in uh, OpenBSC uh, Git. So using those tools and uh, uh, the right hardware, you can, you can have some fun with uh, GSM. Okay, well, thanks uh, for your attention. Um, questions? Well, thank you, Harold. If you've got any questions, there are two mics in the middle of the aisle. Um, please go to them and ask your question. Yeah, of course, your questions need to be recorded for surveillance purposes, right? All so right. <laughs> you have to use the mic, otherwise, you know. So, yeah, go ahead. All right. Uh, is there any effort uh, to uh, basically get off the air uh, the transmission between phone and uh, uh, the BTS? So basically, we don't break the law when we test uh, this stuff, so we don't uh, use uh, this uh, forbidden uh, non-public uh, uh, use uh, frequencies? Um, I'm not quite sure whether I understood your question. Um, so you want uh, some tool that uh, obtains the transmission or that, that receives the transmission between the mobile phone and the BTS? I want uh, basically to take this off the air, so either uh, do something at the physical layer so basically connect them uh, via uh, some uh, direct electrical connection, in, uh, so uh, uh -huh. not use the air or uh, use some, uh, let's say, proxy. Uh, okay, so you want to avoid using the RF frequency and you want a direct connection between the Correct. phone and the BTS. Okay, so what you can do is you can use a dummy load at your, your BTS. A dummy so, load is, is a fake antenna that will just burn all the energy. And then if you have the phone, let's say, like one to five centimeters distance of that, you will still be able to receive it, but at, you know, even 20 or 30 centimeters, you will not receive a signal anymore. All right. Um, the other option you have is, of course, to obtain a test license. I mean, the work I'm doing and the work we're doing here at the CCC, we have five transceivers running here in this building in GSM, legitimately with an official license from, from the government authorities. And that, that cost... <laughs> And this is called an experimental license, and the cost involved for a single frequency per annum for a year is 130 euros. So that's not an expensive uh, proposition. Um, here, since we have five channels, it's, uh, it's slightly more expensive, but uh, this is for Germany. I know in the Netherlands, at Hacking at Random, we also had official permission. In Vienna, when we did a security workshop on GSM, there also was an official license. So in, in all the countries, at least in Western free countries, I think uh, there should be an option how you can get a test permit to do experimentation and research um, on GSM systems. All right, uh, that's fair enough. Uh, and uh, can we take this uh, one layer above? So basically we uh, don't actually need uh, this uh, uh, BTS hardware. So we use only software and uh, we take some, uh, let's say some uh, uh, direct connection before the uh, transceiver in a specific uh, set of uh, mobile phones or something like that. I don't think that is uh, possible. Right. In, in the phone itself, um, everything is implemented as, you know, it's one baseband processor and it does everything from application layer down to the, the radio layer and you don't get access to any intermediate interfaces. Okay, so uh, you don't get the chance to get any data from there and proxy it from some... Uh, no, no, okay. no. I mean, okay. if you, let's say, if you have, uh, if you already have reverse engineered a lot of details of a particular baseband software, then you might be able to replace some existing code with your own sort of proxy for that the layer two protocol messages, but I think it's extremely hard to do and I wouldn't, wouldn't bother, um, honestly. Um, of course, if you, if you happen to have the source code to one of the uh, GSM uh, stack implementations, some, some people do, um, then you can uh, compile that as a library and then just feed it messages in and see what happens when it comes out, but that is not something that the normal, you know, average uh, security researcher can do. All right, thank you. The other mic? Um, 
these these IP access sorry my voice is gone these IP access boxes that you use um